Hello, I'm Greg Greenwood and welcome to my studio. What the heck is this sterling silver stuff and what is silver solder? What's it made of? What does it do? What's the whole story behind it? I don't want to get too technical in this video, but I, it, I feel it's really important that we understand the chemistry and the science behind these alloys and how they react to heat and, and what we're doing in jewelry making. So it all starts off with fine silver. Fine silver is basically pure silver. 999 parts per thousand of silver is fine silver. The problem with fine silver in jewelry making is that it's becomes it's really very soft and it's it's easy to work with but it doesn't hold up to the details that we use in jewelry making so they had to come up with a different idea to make it a little bit tougher so they decided to make an alloy and an alloy is a combination of two or more different metals making a new metal. So they took the fine silver and they added copper to it. So they took 925 parts per thousand and added 75 parts per thousand of copper and made a new alloy, it's sterling silver. And this new alloy was a lot tougher and would hold up to the rigors of everyday life in jewelry making and to the details that we would put into jewelry. So that was a real, real plus. So now we've got a nice alloy of sterling silver. And by the way, the sterling silver does melt at 1640 degrees Fahrenheit. I want to put that in there because we're going to be relating those melting temperatures to the solder a little bit later in the video. Now we have our sterling silver, our nice alloy that's nice and hard. We can make little pieces with it. We can also put these pieces together. But how do we do that? What do we use? Well, we use silver solder. We make a new alloy out of silver that will melt at a lower temperature. So Silver solder is silver, copper, and zinc. Zinc is the key metal in the solder to lower the melting temperature of the silver. So the more zinc that you have in your alloy, the lower the temperature. Let's take a look at the grades of solder that we use in jewelry making. Basically, there's about five different grades of solder. The first one that melts at the highest temperature is called IT. It has a flow temperature of 1490 degrees. The next one down is hard solder. There's 1450 degrees. Medium has a flow temperature of 1360 degrees. Easy solder has a flow temperature of 1325 degrees. And extra easy has a flow temperature of 1207 degrees Fahrenheit. So what does this really mean with these different melting temperatures? Well, when we start working with jewelry, there's going to be solder joints that are really close to each other. And so what we would normally be doing is we would start at a higher temperature and solder that joint first, and then we can move down to the next solder joint, which might be fairly close to this first one, and use uh, a grade of solder that melts at a little bit lower temperature. So then we would start at the high temperatures first and kind of work our way down through those grades of solder so we wouldn't be remelting that solder joint that we just got done doing. It's fun to talk about all this stuff, but let's really see what happens with those solders once they start melting. What I'd like to do is I'll lay out a sterling silver sheet and I'll put the different grades of solder next to each other and then we'll heat those up and then you can see how they melt in relationship to each other. So let's take a look at that and I think it'll be really interesting for you. I've laid out a silver strip here with the five different grades of solder on it. The first one here is extra easy, easy, medium, hard, and IT. 
this is the one that will melt first. And you'll notice that it's a little bit different form here for the extra easy. Uh, these other solders are in sheet form and I only have the extra easy in a wire form. Now also, these are huge pieces of solder and so we normally would be using them uh, probably about one-sixth the size that they're here. But I put them a little bit larger so you could see them for the demo. So we'll be heating these up with our torch and we'll watch the borax flux. The borax flux is on here and it will start bubbling and boiling first because there's water in it and it uh, will bubble off and then it'll lay down. So it'll bubble first here. Make sure that the pallions get back in place. So we'll heat up the piece. I'm not really trying to focus on the solder. I'm heating the sheet metal. It's the sheet metal and the indirect heat that will do the melting. So you don't want to spend too much time on this. You want to zoom right in on it, but I have a tendency to talk a little bit more while we're demonstrating this. So I'm trying to keep the heat a little bit away. So now I'm going to zoom in on it and start heating the sheet silver and you'll see the progression here there's the extra easy starting to melt and then next in line will be the easy it melts the medium melts the hard and then the IT melts You'll notice here that the solder flux has stayed on the metal all the way toward this end right here, and then it starts turning black or dark gray. So what has happened is the IT has that higher melting temperature, and so the flux also will start burning off at those higher temperatures. So when the uh, solder gets to that higher temperature, that flux will have a tendency to burn off. So that's one of the reasons why you don't want to be using IT all the time. You normally would start with hard and then work our way on down. Hard, medium, easy, and then extra easy. So if I'm going to be using IT solder, I'm going to make sure that I get lots of flux in there, even add flux to the solder joint as I'm working. And also, as I mentioned before, these pallions or pieces of solder were huge. And so I would be cutting a lot smaller pieces of solder and they would melt much, much faster. And I can concentrate my heat on the, on the sheet metal and not on the solder. So that's a really good example of what would happen when it starts getting overheated. As you can see, we can take advantage of these alloys of solder and their melting temperatures when we fabricate our jewelry. If you understand the science behind the art, it makes our job easier to solve design and fabrication problems, which makes our lives much, much more pleasant and a lot more fun. Thanks for watching the video, really appreciate it. And if you haven't subscribed already, make sure that you do subscribe so you can see the upcoming soldering videos. And I appreciate you watching. Hope you enjoyed it. See you next time. Mm -hmm.